So, Bibbles, get all back to answer some more goddamn questions. And today's questions, I'm actually really looking forward to on this one. I was looking forward to getting this video. Don't know what the hell's in there, but it was on the grave video where I know some pink panties got wedged up some fucking booty holes. Second grave album was a little yo, yo, yo. I was ready to put my hat on sideways. That goddamn fucking video posted two weeks ago. Uh, 1.1k views, too. 219 fucking comments. So let's see what type of questions there is. And if somebody's completely fucking, uh, you know, feels like they got butt raped on that, we'll see. I'll read it off, too. So remember, when the video first went up, like I said, I check it in within 24 hours. Not 24 hours a day off. Usually about six, seven hours after it went up. Make sure everything went okay. Look at the comments at glance. I remember seeing some shit like, this guy's out of his fucking mind or something of the likes. But we're about to fucking see. That was two weeks ago. We'll see what fuck's in here. Uh, question marks I see. Forgotten channels. What's up, J-Dog? I was just thinking about this when you mentioned suffocation EPs. What do you think of Sinister's Bastard Saints EP? Fucking love it, Monumental. As a matter of fact, a little fun fact, that's the first release by Sinister I uh, bought. It was the first CD. Uh, literally, the song Bastard Saints is one of my, the title track, is one of my favorite uh, Sinister songs of all time. Fucking love the line, Victims of Christian Filth. Perfectly well fucking said. Totally underrated, in my opinion. Smokes everything on Maggot's not for sure. For the new material on it. I love the somewhat technical style of death metal riffing, and it goes hand in hand with my my favorite album there is Hate. Yeah, Hate's fucking great, too. Like I said, uh, all the albums with Mike, to me, those I don't see how anyone can't like those. So Hate, Bastard Saints, Diabolical Summoning, which is my favorite, and Cross the Sticks. I, if you like death metal, I don't know how the fuck you can't, can't like those. If somebody's like, I didn't really care for aggressive measures that much, or... Um, um, the um, Creative Killings, which that was that was my last album I liked by them. Uh, I get it, but I mean, the first four? I mean, come on, man, come on. You don't like those, like, to get the fuck out of town. Yeah, calls from the beyond. Hey, J Dog, a little story time for you. A little bit of a book, but just a mini book, so we'll read it off. I was recently at the airport checking my bags with an attendant. I was wearing a Mortress shirt, got from the Left to Die show in Tampa. Funny, I got that probably same goddamn Mortress shirt I got. It was the album shirt, and I got the Left to Die show too, because Mortress, um, that was the first time I actually heard them. Um, listen to it, I, I liked them at the show. Really enjoyed them a lot. The thing is, they uh, they have a few parts where it's just a little too slow at times, where you guys know it's that fucking, you know, kind of like incantation, autopsy, where it's a little more doomy for my taste. Uh, but something about them, there's a couple parts where I was like, you guys kept it going a little too long, but a couple of them stuck out to me at the uh, show when they would go, when it was just enough of the slow, and when it would kick in like a really fast drum part. The way they did it, I just thought it was really cool and really stood out to me, and I really enjoyed it. So, um... And I love the fucking, you know, low, brutal vocals, but that's, you know, nothing new. Um, not, definitely nothing new and original there. But, um, yeah, I, I was thoroughly entertained by them. So I picked up the LP. I had the guy sign it. And who was all the guys? They shot the shit with the guys. I forget their names. Uh, but they're all super, super friendly guys. Had them sign my LP. Because I'm like, they're at the table. Fucking may as well just get, get this LP signed. The debut album. Had them sign that. Bought a shirt. And, yeah. So I, I thought they were great. So same goddamn shirt. Same goddamn show. But only it was the club, the goddamn Cleveland show. But I was thoroughly entertained. And he asked me what band my shirt was. Oh, God, those fucking homos. I can't stand that question. It's kind of like, unless you're in a death model, kind of don't ask. And you know he's not. Fuck, that leave off, God damn it. And he was thinking, about shirt. I'm thinking, oh, Christ. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Here we go. Let's do That's literally what goes in my head. That's. Forbatum, literally, that's what goes in my mind. The, the exact words going off my mind in this exact tone is, oh, God, I don't want to talk to this asshole. I already know where this is going. I, like, that's literally the fucking words that pop in my mind. But I humored him and said, mortuous. <laughs> it's usually what I do, too. I answer, but I'm biting my cheeks. Then the dude asked what kind of music it was, so I said death metal. He immediately responds with death metal. Yeah, you mean like Fear Factory? Oh, yeah, I met those fucking canoes. I automatically, exactly. My head just wants to fucking explode. My wife and I had to endure five minutes of this dude's love of Fear Factory and DD. I don't know what DD is. Before getting our boarding passes and bag tickets. Anyways, made me uh, think of your videos and the Pantera canoes you dealt with. Yeah, no, dude, we all get the same shit. Thousand percent. 
I mean, uh, it, it, it's just flat out annoying because it's like, dude, no, it, it, it's not the same thing, and it's it's a, it is annoying. It's flat out fucking annoying. I, I 100% agree. And it's kind of like, why is it if you think you're a part of this scene or you know that music style, why is it every time those fucking canoes, the bands you bring up, the death metal bands, like you say, Mord or something, they never heard of. They never, not they haven't, oh, I haven't heard that one, because just like myself, can't hear of every band, right? But they haven't even heard of. They'll always mention something stupid, like, yeah, exactly, Fear Factor, or Pantera, or, or Static X, bro, or something fucking stupid, right? It's like, why is it that you never know the shit that I'm wearing or that I mention? It's like, if you know death metal, like, what, why wouldn't you say something smart, like, even, like, that you should know if you know death metals? How about obituary? How about deicide? How about cannibal corpse? How about suffocation? Something that's at least in the fucking genre. It's never that. It's never that. Important Spawn 666, I always thought Despise the Sun was the best suffocation release. I, mean, I disagree, but I, def I do like it. Um... I do like that EP, but I don't. I, just, I definitely it's not as good as uh, even Waste of Limbo. Permanent Corpse, cool video, brother. There's minor keyboards on the Hypocrisy album, Penetralia, but they fit cool in my opinion. Yeah, minor keyboards are if they fit, they fit. Um, you know what I mean? I don't have I don't have a problem with keyboards. Uh, do you like that one or Osculum of Senum better? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I've gone back and forth. Honestly, flip a coin. Um, both of those are absolute fucking tens masterpieces. And to me, I think, honestly, both of those as a whole, I think those are some of the most underrated death metal albums of all fucking time because people never bring them up just from the time frame they are from. And the fact that it was also from Sweden, too, and it wasn't just, here we go again, another band that sounds like Grave, another band that sounds like Dismember, Tombs, you know what I mean? Here we go again, you know what I mean? Like then, those first two hypocrisies that take a band like Deranged, Regurgitate, bands that were early on from Sweden, it's like, finally, outside the fucking mold, you know what I mean? Um... I just get a feeling, even though a lot of those classic Swedish bands I like, you know, Carnage, et cetera, as much as I, I mean, I don't want to rip on them, but I almost get a feeling that most of those guys are just a bunch of fucking posers posing off each other. It's like, why do you all have to fucking sound alike? Granted, those albums are classic as fuck, some of my all-time favorites, but when you really do look back on them, when, you know, Carbonized was, Carbonized was doing it too, it's like some of the other bands that aren't even as big being brought up, it's like, why are you guys all trying to sound like Left Hand Path? Like, you're just a bunch of fucking posers just trying to do the same thing. It doesn't make any sense. Um, and to be honest, with that theory being being said, it kind of makes sense. Look at where most of them ended up going and doing. Like none of them are like, the fuck is this deplorable shit? Look at great what Grave ended up going and doing. Look what fucking Untune went up going up and doing. Unleashed. Um, none of those bands stood to their roots what they went out south to do. It's so kind of like, I mean, of course they stuck around to it because they all kind of got to the point where they're big enough to make a living. So it's like, honestly, that most of them. Not saying all. I'm sure there's some guys that probably are kind of fucking posers. Just Posers just listen to classic rock, not the death metal. I would bet money that 85 to 90% of the members, I'm not going to say which ones or who knows, I don't know. I'm just saying, I would bet money, 85 to 90%. If you can see the skeletons in their closets and see the behind the scenes, 85 to 90% of those guys are, are fucking posers. They don't even listen to posers in the sense that they don't listen to death metal. Goat 66DB, I love You'll Never See, but yeah, I can see how some of the vocal pairs can be seen as kind of rappy. <laughs> Smiley face. Uh, Joshua Michael. Not too many fucking uh, Paul Devils here that I'm seeing. Oh, again, there was over 200 comments, so some of maybe not got, got to them. Uh, question, J-Dog. Any good Nunslaughter recommendations? So far, I only own the Open the Gates set and the Goat album, and they blow out my brains every time. The discography is pretty intimidating to fully cover. So a point in the right direction could be helpful. Yeah, it could be very, very, very helpful. Uh, any of the Devil's Conjuries discs, get those. Because that, that has their 7 inches on them. Like their studio 7 inches on them. So any of them. So I think there's there's four total out now. All put out by Hells. Get all four of those. Like, honestly, the majority of the stuff I've listened to by Nunslaughter is usually the Devil's Conjuries. Because some of my favorite songs are on um, are uh, from the 7 inches. Like, some of my favorite 7 inches of all time by them is the Burn the Cross 7 inch. Cerebus 7 inch. The Trifurcate 7 inch. Sickened by the Sight of Christ, which was the split with Cyanide. Um, kind of the Black 7 inch, but, but specifically because Fuck the Bastard. That's definitely one of my favorite Nunslaughter songs. So those are some I released. But I mean, between when you get all four 
all the volumes that are out, that's going to cover a lot of the seven-inch territories. And things like Burn the Cross are on there, Sinking by the Sight of Christ on there, Cerebus is on there. I think all the releases I just mentioned, up to date between the four volumes, you would have all those. Um, and then the albums, uh, just any of the albums are all good. Hells and Holy Fire is my favorite. But if you can pick up an Angelic Dread, Hex, and uh, the new album, uh, those are all great. And then other releases I really like that, that nobody brings up. I love One Night in Hell. That's a live CD. Fucking love it. It's got a uh, sound quality is good. And the, the talking in between songs is absolutely hysterical. And then there's a live in the studio release, uh, Radio Damnation. That's also one of my favorite non slaughter releases for the same exact reason. Sound quality is great. And the talking between songs is fucking hysterical. So that's those are my non slaughter recommendations. My personal faves. Go, uh, go, Taunter. Immolation's Failure for Gods was a great album, but the trigger drums were painfully obvious, especially on the title track. Really, because I always liked how the tr uh, drums sounded on Failures, and especially close to World Below. I love the drum sound on those. I really like Grave, and I absolutely hate rap and hip hop. It's painful to think about any similarities between you'll never see a rap music. Okay, I'm not saying, I'm just saying it's got a little bit more of the bouncy things. I'm not saying it's a fucking rap album. I would not go to that stretch whatsoever. And again, it's mostly. And Here I Die Satisfied EP, where it was really fucking obvious. I'm, I'm, I'm almost positive the title track, that where it was really obvious, but it was... The reason why is because every time I listen to that, I had the two-on-one disc, and uh, I had listened at the same time. You'll never you'll never see the uh, first half, and at the end, is here, and Here I Die Satisfied. So anytime I listen to it, I listen to that CD, and I hear it once, and it's I'm almost positive that and Here I Die Satisfied song. But if it's not that specific one, but I'm almost positive it is, it's one of the tracks, except it's not Black Dawn. Um, that it's, 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 it's irrefutable. You cannot tell me that this is not kind of bouncy, but I still like, but again, I still like it. Like, Hey, throw a little bit of that flavor in there too. You know what I mean? You know, every once in a while you like to fucking switch it up, but no, I wouldn't want a whole fucking album like that. Peter Edelstein. Hey, j -Dog, did you see the grave complete demo cassette box set by Floga Records? Oh, yeah, we uh, we got those in. We distributed them all in the U.S. Uh, very, very nice looking box set. Uh, well, fuck, that came out quite a while ago now. Uh, definitely a handful of years ago now. It is an excellent little box set. Yes, it is. Also, what is your opinion on U.K. thrash band, Sabat? Personally, I think the first two albums are amazing. Cheers. Uh, again, first two. Um, I didn't even know they, they had more than two albums, actually. I just know the first two. Like those, but I always prefer the Japanese Sabat, especially the album um, In Venom, which is my all-time favorite. And then... No, no, not Venom. Evoke, the second album. The second album, Evoke, is my favorite. Then Venom, and I like uh, Fetishes of a Disembodied a lot. After that, eh, not so much. Um, but that was the first stuff I heard, especially Evoke. That was the first Sabat release I heard. We got traded from Iron Pegasus. I was the one casing them up. I'm like, oh, this looks cool. I'll just have and everything. Fucking Gezo and his undies and shit. Fucking Bullet Belt and Pentagrams. Um, I put it on, and I absolutely loved it, especially the song Torment and the Pentagram in Venom and the Witch's Hole. I mean, just absolutely fucking loved it. So um, that's my favorite. But the the, uh, the UK one, I like. I, I do like them. It's a, it's a, it was also a good band. Go Tonsha, Human Human Waste was by far the best supplication. A thousand percent agree. I don't even know how anyone can refute that or even think otherwise. It has the most rawness and brutal character, and all the songs are tense or all catchy, as opposed to like. I think all the songs in Effigy are actually really good too. Like Leash of Inveracity and the title track and shit. But definitely Breeding the Spawn and Pierce from Within. It's got filler songs out the ass. Where it's just like these, these songs. I mean, it's got hits too. Don't be wrong. Like the title track Pierce from Within is, is fucking great. But it's it, a lot of it's just filler. You're like, yeah, it's brutal. and it's But it's like, it, it's, it's literally unmemorable and, and, and it's just fucking filler. Human Waste, there's no fucking filler. All fucking killer. Gary Quinn, j -Bra, the intro to Hellcast sounds suspiciously close to the course of the pan fucking terrace on Hellhound. <laughs> you boys over at HHR aren't closet homeboys, are yes. Uh well Hellcast isn't my thing. That was Craig's thing. I just made I just made guest appearance. Uh so I can't speak for him, but no pan no pan terror over here. Um as far as the intro, I thought the intro was uh sadistic intent he used. I barely even ever listened to the shit that when he posted it, so I don't even know. But um 
I thought he used a sadistic intent uh, from a resurrection. So I thought that's what I thought it was. So. Man, where's the ribbons on? God damn it. Yeah, that's uh, nuclear penetration. Hey, hey, man, sometimes I get down with the homeboy shit. Well, then the graves are just for you, then, it sounds like. I thought there was guys really fucking appalled and pissed off. At least I've not seen them. Richard Pittman, 666. Sup, J Dog. What's your favorite brutal death metal three piece band? I would say Shane Eternal when they're actually a three piece, and Christian comes to my mind. Christian's a very good fucking pick. Uh, Mortician, another one if you count with Desmond. When it was Will, which is that's made my favorite lineup actually. Will, Roger, and Desmond. So Mortician, Christian, uh, Broadquin, uh, aka Jamie No Reply. I would say Hate Eternal when they're actually a three piece and Christian come to mind for me, but I'm sure there's a ton I'm forgetting. What's your thoughts on Hate Plow? Fucking love Hate Plow. Want to do the uh, two albums on vinyl. I was going to ask um, Phil at the show, but he fell and broke his leg or some shit. It was not the show. I told the story on camera. Uh, the last time they played here, which was what, what, two, three months ago. Huge fan of the fucking two hate claws. I like the second album better, uh, The Only Law of Survival, but um, Everybody Dies is very, very good too. Big, big fan. Had the CDs for years. Um, be a dream, literally a dream come true. J Dog on Christmas Day, if we could do those on vinyl. We'd love to do them. Uh, I fucking down to smash some skulls, and when I hear that shit, that's, that, that's the thing. It smashes skulls too. Both albums are badass, but The Only Law of Survival is definitely my favorite. Me too. Classic from beginning to end, Dave Cool Ross on drums. And the thing is, is not only is every song fucking blasting, but none of the songs sound the same. Like it's you can like sing along to the lyrics, it's catchy, it's metal, the lyrics are fucking funny and offensive to the wimps, and it's super memorable. That's where the problem is. Like a lot of brut like let's be brutal, but I was like, it's not fucking memorable though. That was like a lot of bands that couldn't do it. Like, I mean, Terrorize the World Outfall, that's fucking brutal and ferociously fast, right? But it's memorable and awesome. You know what I mean? So you can't just be brutal just to be brutal. I'll be honest, that's why even like the, especially the first Broadquin, Instruments of uh, Torture, for whatever reason, that's, uh, that album always, not only was it raw, it was super over the top brutal, right? But the songs all, they're catchy and memorable. Same with regurgitation, tails and necrophilia, they're catchy and fucking memorable. Like it's, they don't sound the same. All the sudden, like it's just, it, it just, it had its fucking place. You know what I mean? It's like, as opposed to a lot of the shit, you're just like, yeah, I like this sound and stuff, but this shit all sounds the same. It's not memorable at all. You know what I mean? But so hate plow, yeah, fucking destroys all the shit coming out nowadays. With the exception of fuse that I, I mentioned to you, that I think it's fucking great. Like, say melting ground or something. Fucking that, that's up there with them too. Killer as fuck. So there's stuff that does, but. For the most part, I'm just kind of like, eh. It's like, you know, nothing's coming out as, you know, coming out as good that's fucking as good as a fucking hate blouse. Tom Foley asked me what are my thoughts on Nate Palm Raid. Never actually listened to him. Saw him coming through the shop. Um, just one of those bands. Never checked out. Maybe I should. Agabor, Kevin Bacon's son is into metal. Cool. Glad to hear it. Is he into metal or is he into Fear Factory fucking Static X fake ass fucking metal? Does, does he like Hate Plow? Maybe. I doubt it. <laughs> is this uh oh yeah because we don't this video must have been after we might make this the last one uh abby simmons disclaimer for regular viewers only <laughs> question what's elvis's favorite what's elvis's least favorite tv show <laughs> without the slightest without slightest doubt it has to be to catch a predator <laughs> wasn't that wasn't that him on episode 22 <laughs> So yeah, the fucking child molester, piece of fucking shit that fucking clutters up my goddamn gym that just need to be fucking shanked like he's fucking in prisons. That's where he belongs, and his goddamn fucking kidneys. 
That's what we're talking about. Uh, Catch a Predator, yeah, exactly. <laughs> sure, that probably is. You know what? I've yet to see that piece of shit, too, since I posted a video. Remember, I saw, I saw I think once, maybe twice since I posted that video, and then I did another video. So it's it's going to be up by the time you see this one. Um, that I haven't seen him yet. And is he dead or in jail? You know what I mean? I still haven't seen him yet. So after I put. After I record that video, this is about another week going by now that I'm doing this one. Still another whole week. I haven't seen him. Keep in mind, I saw this motherfucker for sure four out of five days of the week of training. For sure at least four. Some weeks only three, but almost always four. Sometimes five. Um, so he was always there for like two years straight when I when he started coming, which is about two, two to three years ago is when he started coming, when I first started seeing his fucking child molesting ass. So he was regularly coming, but he's another one of those guys. He regularly goes, but doesn't change whatsoever. It's like, dude, what the fuck? Your diet's got to be complete trash. You literally look exactly the same. You're still overweight. Like, what the fuck are you doing? You've been coming in for three years, and zero results. You're not questioning that? Like, wow, man, I must be doing something wrong. I literally look exactly the same. Um, I still look like a fucking bag of horse manure. Like, what the fuck? You're doing something wrong. He's one of those guys. But he's been coming for years. But ever since that video, once or twice I've seen him, like I said, in that same week and then nothing since. It's a hell of a coincidence. Now that I said that, he'll probably be there fucking tomorrow. So I'm, I'm loving it, not seeing his fucking child molesting ass. Um, yeah, it's just almost too good to be goddamn true. So it's like fucking fingers goddamn crossed, right? Knock on fucking wood. But um, yeah, still haven't. But that's <laughs> that's who Abby Simmons is talking about. In case uh, <laughs> any new devils watching this one, like what the fuck are you talking? We're not talking about Elvis Presley, goddamn. We're talking about Elvis, the fucking weirdo child molester that J Dog can't stand, hates with fucking passion. Anywho, that's it for this one. Devils, comments, questions, concerns. You know what the fuck to do. Put them in the goddamn comments box. I'm getting an answer bright and early 6 a.m. in the morning. See you later, goddammit.